Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to continue the journey in learning Cubases. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are inside Cubases. We're going to click on new here and we are going to create a new project. Let's delete the tracks that uh, the new project has and which it comes by default. So delete and delete so we don't have any uh, tracks available. Let's click on the plus sign here and let's select MIDI because indeed we want to start with a MIDI track because the MIDI track is the one which enables the keys views here which you can see at the top, which is the topic for this tutorial. Now, before I continue, I'd like to use my external uh, MIDI controller. So I'm going to turn it on is a Bluetooth Akai controller. So let me show you how you can configure that. So you can click on setup, you can go on to MIDI. I turn on Bluetooth on the controller. Then when it says MIDI over Bluetooth, click on host. And you will see it has found the Akai LPK25 wireless. Click on it and now it will try to connect. And now it says connected. Now if I press some keys, you will start to hear the piano. So click on the X to close that view. Now let's click where it says here keys and we bring up the keys view as you can see. And the view already shows the keys which are priced using the external controller so I don't have to um, use the um, keyboard on the touch screen which of course you can do just um, like so. Okay, so let's uh, show you how this view works. So if you click here and hold and you move up you can change the size of the view which can become very handy if you want to perform directly with the iPad um, or your iOS device. Here it is the minimum size vertically that you can have this view open. And uh, if you click on the X, of course, you uh, close the view. And if you want it back, again, press on the keys icon up here. Of course, you need to have selected a MIDI track. Here you see the name of a preset, Acoustic Piano. It is the default preset for the default uh, instrument uh, associated to a MIDI track. Now, if you press uh, this button here, you click on it, it will maximize the view of the instrument associated to the selected MIDI track, which is Microsonic, as you can see, is written here where I'm showing it with uh, the mouse. And let's go through this uh, instrument because it's a very simple but uh, efficient, a very nice, simpler instrument. So at the top here, you have monophonic view preview. So you click where it says C0 and this button to preview the C0 note. C2, C4, C6. So you can use these two to preview really notes. On the right hand side, your polyphonic preview. So it shows you or previews a C1 major chord starting from C1, A2, Sus4, A3, major 7, and A4 minor. Okay, so at the top you still have these instrument names, I should say the preset name, Acoustic Piano. If you click on the arrow on the right hand side, you go to the next preset. You can see some changes here on the envelope, on the release and attack. Of course, you can click on the arrow to the left to go back to the previous preset. If you click on this button where it says list browse, you see on the left hand side this panel opening up, it tells you that it is Microsonic instrument and it shows you all the different presets here, which of course you can scroll um, and um, of course select uh, directly. Down here you see also categories of instrument, so you can go to piano, keys, and you can see changing on the left hand side. Organ. Synth. And you can still move uh, to the right, um, to the next preset. Mm -hmm. 
really nice analog strings. And then you have guitar. Really nice bass. Strings as well. Brass. Really nice. And woodwinds. Choir. That's great. Chromatic. You have vibraphones, this type of uh, preset. Let's try a few more. Marimba. Percussion. And then lastly, you have drums. When you click on drums, the view changes. At the bottom, you have now pads. Also on the top left, it says pads instead of keys. Indeed, if I go back to piano, now it says keys here. Okay, so you can uh, close this view, this side panel on the left hand side. If you have it open again and you click up here, you go up one level, you can see the microsonic instrument uh, loaded and there are other instruments here, including no, no instrument, audio units, interrupt, classic machine, mini sampler and micro log. Now, um, here you see at the center of Microsonic also an envelope at the top. You can adjust the attack. Becomes more like a string or a pad and you can adjust the release as well. So it takes much longer before uh, it cuts the sound. Next, you have polyphony, so the number of voices played simultaneously up to 128, so really good. And, and then you have pitch band range in semitones from 1 to 12 semitones, which is an octave. So to see that in action, down here at the bottom left, you have your pitch band. Up by two semitones or down by two semitones. Of course, I can change that to 12 semitones. Okay, so you can see the effect. Now, if I want to um, show you the modulation wheel, at the moment that doesn't have effect, but if I go to a, a, a micro log, I go to a preset here and... Um, you can see now the modulation wheel uh, taking effect. Now let's go back up up again and select it then again that the microsonic okay so that in a nutshell is the microsonic instrument so let's close this down and minimize this view again right okay next so here you have a button which says wheels click on it and you remove the pitch um, band and the modulation wheel here next you have keys and pads click on it to activate the pad Click again to go back to keys. Then you have a button here which stands for chords. So it is enabled. If you disable it, the buttons here for the chords disappear. Um, if you enable it again, you can press where it says one to, to of course, play a chord. And you can play a lot of different chords. If you want to know how to edit these chords for each of the pad, click on edit. And then you can see for number one, it shows you the different note. Let's add a C3 like so. Now let's exit uh, the edit uh, mode. If I press the code, you can see it's playing also C3. If I want to edit it again, just uh, click edit, remove the C3 and uh, exit from edit. So nice and simple, right? Additionally, here you have repeat. When you click on it on the right hand side, you have note subdivision. So let's say one eighth, uh, click and hold on a note. It will repeat the, that note and let's go faster. Of course, you can also activate chords.
So you see the repeat function works also with chords as well. Really nice. Um, if you click um, on keys to show the pads again and you press edit in this view, you have a different view here. You can adjust the type of chord. So at the moment it says here yeah, A sharp one major in version two. I can go to dominant seven, minor seven. And then I can go up and down the inversion, root, first inversion, second inversion. And then you can go up and down octave here. And here you can choose the note as well. And you can also copy and paste between different parts, which is really great. So let's uh, remove the edit and let's go back to that keys and part views. Here you have a sustain button, click on it. And as you click and hold on it, now you can press on keys. There you are. So I was not pressed any well. And of course, you let go the sustain. It's like the, your um, piano sustain uh, pedal. Um, next, here you can click on the keyboard um, here to change the range. And you can narrow it or extend the range here going to the right and left and side on these handles to make the selection of the keys uh, shown on the screen wider or narrow as you prefer, depending on uh, how you prefer to play on the screen. So this in a nutshell is how to use the keys and pads view. And we have also seen how to um, access the microsonic sampler instrument. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. See you next time. Bye.